In this video, we're going to go through an example of finding the area of a circle in both Cartesian and polar coordinates uh, through integration. This example will be used to illustrate how a problem can be considerably simpler in one coordinate system relative to another. So to refresh our memory, when we calculate the area of a figure such as a circle, what you're essentially doing is adding up small area elements such as these over the boundary of the surface that you're looking at, in this case, a circle. And just to refresh your memory, in Cartesian coordinates, we said in the last video that the area element dA is equal to the product between the width of your area element and the height dx times dy. And there are, in Cartesian coordinates, there's two ways of going about this. You can either integrate with respect to y first, and then with respect to x, taking into account the proper boundaries, which from the equation of a circle tells you that the upper boundary is given by y is equal to r squared minus x squared, and the lower boundary is equal to minus r squared minus x squared. So you integrate from your lower boundary to your upper boundary with respect to y, and then x is integrated over the range bound by the circle, so minus r to r. A second way of doing this integral is by integrating with respect to x first and then y. Now taking into account this boundary over here, which is given by r squared minus y squared. It should be y. And this boundary over here, which is the negative. And then y is integrated within the bounds of the circle, so from minus r to r. So for the sake of choosing one particular case, we're going to go, we're going to illustrate this case explicitly. So we have um, the area minus r to r. We perform the integral with respect to y first, and I'm just putting it in parentheses to make that clear. And then whatever result we get from this, we integrate that with respect to x. This integral is easy to do. It's just equal to the difference of the boundaries. integrator with respect to x. We can, we can simplify this, skipping a couple of steps, which, which I recommend you try to fill in. To something that looks like this. And you might recognize this integral as one that requires trig substitution to solve, or it's at least one of the ways that you can do this. So the substitution that will work for this is saying that x over r is equal to sine of t. Here, t is going to become our dummy variable of integration. And we need to replace the infinitesimal dx by r cos t dt. Our new limits of integration 
are going to be when x was equal to r. We go over here and we can see that sine of t would be equal to 1, which implies that t is equal to pi over 2. When x is equal to minus r, this implies that sine of t is equal to negative 1, which means that t must be equal to minus pi over 2. So our area is given by 2r. Our limits of integration are now from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. This term in the square root is replaced by cos t. And our differential dx is replaced by r cos t dt. You can simplify this further. To give the integral from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 of cosine squared t dt. And if you evaluate this integral, you get the familiar pi r squared for the area of a circle. Now, you can see that we have to do a substantial amount of work, know how to integrate by trick substitution to be able to solve this problem. In contrast, when we use polar coordinates, what we're doing now is instead of breaking up the circle into small rectangular grids, we are going to break up the circle into area elements that already capture the curvature of the boundary. So area elements such as these, where the area of this L of any one element is given by r dr d theta, where d theta is this angle over here. All right, so Once again, the area is found by summing up all of the contributions from each one of these area elements. Which is given by r dr d theta. Now, one of the nice things about this is r and theta are completely independent from each other. So we don't need to do one integration first and then follow it up with the second. We can perform both integrations completely independent from one another. So we can evaluate the integral r dr on its own and the integral d theta on its own. The boundaries of integration for the circle, you have to think about how much r can vary. So if the radius of the circle uh, was r prime, then r can vary from zero all the way to the edge of the circle, r prime. And then theta, remember theta is the angle with respect to your x-axis. And this can vary from zero and it needs to go all the way around to be able to take into account each one of the area elements across the circle. So this goes from zero all the way to two pi. And performing these two integrations, gives you the familiar pi r squared formula for the area in a considerably simpler way than with Cartesian coordinates. So this is one example where polar coordinates can simplify the problem. And the next video, we're going to review another coordinate system known as cylindrical coordinate system, as the cylindrical coordinate system, and show how 
uh, in certain problems, it can also be used to simplify calculations.